Welcome to another Crafted DM video. In this video, I'll be going over how to play with multiple DMs and crafting a cinematic experience. So, multiple DMs. Why do people do it? In my mind, there are two main reasons why a group would have multiple GMs. Either they have a really big party and it's hard to interact with everyone at once, or run insane battles all the time. Or maybe they want to give a DM a chance to play a character, or people a chance to play DM. So, how would you accomplish this? Well, the first way, if there are two GMs at once, a good way to do it is one is the story guy and the other is the mechanics guy. How might they collaborate for battles? Well, the story guy gives a cinematic view of how the battle could go down and chips in about terrain, types of enemies, and so on. The mechanics guy, well, he places enemies down, figures out what powers they could have, and runs the battle. While the mechanics guy is dealing damage, the story guy can keep track of conditions, control part of the encounter, describe the environment, and even control the environment. When it comes to the story, they can collaborate on that too, much in the same way. While the story guy tells a story, the other can run certain NPCs. The downfall to this method, though, is that you need much more preparation than a normal game and also a reliable partner. Another way of having multiple DMs is to rotate one in place of the other. This gives the DM a chance to play a player character. To do this, think of episodic content. You have 3 plus X guys in one leg of the adventure. Then X goes off and does something else. And then you have three party members that meet up with Y, and they go on an adventure. This way, a single adventure feels complete and within the same style of a DM. The weakness of this style is that you can't really have a long traditional campaign, as multiple DMs that are also player characters would know the plot. That's all I have for multiple DMs. I hope it helps out. Now, this next part may be relevant for you if you're the story guy. If you're lucky, you've experienced the feeling of being truly immersed in a role-playing game. A scene that sets the mood for you as a player and helps ease you into the role of your character. As a player, it's awesome. And as a DM, it's work. But still awesome when things all come together. So how can you be better at cinematic DMing? First, you're going to have to make some concessions. In my last video, I went over three styles of DMing and how to be a better adversarial DM. You're going to have to throw out a rule when considering this approach. So, rule number one, don't always play fair. When you need a moment to happen, you make it happen and your word goes. That's end of the line, end of story. There are ways to do this without being a dick about it. Certain things you shouldn't ever do though, kill a character outright kill a boss or sub-boss outright, or disable a character for flavor. In RPG culture, this is considered a dick move. Things that could be okay if your party was very roleplay heavy. The first one being replacing a character with a doppelganger and having that character roleplay how a doppelganger would imitate his character, only to be revealed at a critical moment to the rest of your party. Or perhaps your party could divulge this information throughout the rest of the adventure or campaign. This could lead to another adventure that has you rescue your old companion, or maybe he's just in the cellar after the big fight goes down. Another simple way of doing this would be making the party do an evil one's bidding without them even knowing about it or having any clues about it. It just happens. In fact, that's a big kind of mechanic for a lot of campaigns. So rule number one, essentially, don't always play fair. And you don't even have to acknowledge that. If you always want to play fair, then ignore it. Rule number two could also be the only rule in cinematic DMing as well. Start small and build from there. What I mean by starting small is to use flavor text in battles. It's so easy, especially when a character suggests something to you and you allow him to do it. And you describe his actions in a badass way. An example could be that a character wants to grab someone and jump out the window while they're surrounded. They have inspiration and a full turn ahead of them. So it's not very funny to just say, yeah, I'll allow it, go for it. They do it. It's not very fun, is it? However, if allowed and you said that you roll backwards, dodging your opponents as they all swing wildly at you, you then grab your ally and do a backwards leap out the window. DC whatever check to avoid fall damage and damage to the person that you are carrying. A miss becomes a chance to show your opponent's rage. An ironclad opponent swings ferociously at your torso, but you're able to deftly maneuver out of its path. 
He yells at you in rage. These small things can add so much to a group's immersion. Once you're comfortable with that, you can start adding flavor to the plot itself, adding things into the world that ignore certain mechanics. One time, a DM surrounded us in darkness that was non-illuminable. Despite any spell you could cast, you couldn't light up this darkness. It didn't kill us, but it made us scared and very wary. However, if you create something that ignores mechanics, you should create mechanics to defeat it if it's a hostile force. Another way of creating a cinematic experience is to pause the action and describe what the party is doing while something bad is happening. It doesn't even have to be something bad, just something. You take control in a non-harming way and describe their actions. It could be as little as you lift your hands to your face to cover the blinding light from reaching your eyes to you find the nearest hole, hide in it, leaving your allies behind. If the party is strongly opposed to you taking over their actions, then make a simple DC will, or I guess wisdom, sorry, wrong game, uh, or right game if you're playing fourth, I think. On a fail to that check, you take control during this movement. Another way is to take what a player will sacrifice to change the encounter. Don't use this too often though, as I think I've stated in one of my previous videos. While it can create a cinematic battle, it can also be a scapegoat if you let it happen all the time. If you watch any of my other videos, you'll find evidence of this there. One shining example is when Zack's character in Rise of the Rune Lords had been fighting an epic battle on top of an old tower. Things were looking bad for the enemy, but also bad for the group. Zack expended all his hero points and prayed to his god. His god answered with a lightning bolt and struck the tower in a blinding flash and the tower started to crumble. They made a skill check to run down the side of the tower as it was falling and eventually made it to the ground. They lost a lot of treasure, but they did live. Obviously, I described it much better than that, but if you take an idea that you have or a player has and turn it into a cinematic moment that immerses the players, then you should do so. Well, that's all for this video. If you have your own suggestions or comments, feel free to comment down below in the comment section. Thanks for watching, everyone.